All right, what's up, everybody? We're back with more Star Wars Legion action. This time it's going to be from the Invader. Excuse me, not Invader. It's actually from the Legion ladder. So every, uh, every few months, there is a ladder on Legion that runs a season. And people compete. They score ELO points uh, based on their win and loss ratios. And then at the end of the season, there's a playoff tournament for the top 16 finishers. And we're going to be watching one of those games today between Timbo uh, of recent Saber Tank fame and Zeus Juice, who is playing Operative Luke. Timbo is not playing, though, his Saber Tank today. The players in this tournament entered into a gentleman's agreement not to play the meta list. They all agreed to play a Force user, thereby giving this tournament the uh, nickname of the Attorney de Force. If you uh, catch the catch the joke there, um, so yes, this is the tourney de force. Let's take a look at the lists. Starting off here with Zeus Juice playing the Rebel Alliance, running two Rebel officers with vigilance and four Rebel troopers with DLT twenties. Uh, all of them having captured the situational awareness. That's the engine of the list. Basically, these core are like Teflon. It's actually quite difficult to damage them in contrast to their normal state, where it's usually very easy to damage Rebel Troopers. These are much tougher. Vigilance and Nimble and Situational Awareness all working together to make those Rebel core uh, a lot more durable. A lot of dodges there, yes. Uh, welcome back, uh, Farce Returns and Birdland fan. Uh, you've also got three Sniper Strike teams, and of course, the hero of the hour, Operative Luke, with Force Push, Force Reflexes, Saber Throw, and Tenacity. So no Jedi Mind Trick in this list. I wonder if the plan is to play Serve Your Master well on one of those Captain Troopers. They do a substantial amount of damage for the points. 79 points and you're getting 7 black and a white with Critical 1. Seems rather excellent to me for what you uh, have paid for them for 79 points. In contrast, his opponent on the other side of the board, we've got Timbo. Yes, Timbo running Emperor Palpatine with Anger, Force Barrier, and Aggressive Tactics. This is going to be a Return of the Jedi match here. Palpatine versus Operative Luke. Uh, Palpatine extremely good with Aggressive Tactics, Force Barrier, keeping his thin core troopers alive. It's very, very low on core. As you can see here, only three units of Stormtroopers and two Naked Snows, just to get the activation count up to 10. But Palpatine, very good with aggressive tactics, very good with barrier. Anger, of course, for his one pip where he injures himself, gets an aim token from injuring himself with anger. And then is able to make his attacks more precise with his aim tokens. Accompanying... Emperor Palpatine, you've got a unit of Royal Guards. No tenacity, interestingly enough. And environmental gear. You've also got three, sni three sniper strike teams. So this is definitely a match that kind of... Uh, it's sort of a new, a new twist on an old matchup. Uh, it used to be the Emperor versus Commander Luke. Now it's going to be the Emperor versus Operative Luke. With some new tools on both ends here. You've got two Captain Storms with RT-97s and Offensive Push. They should be able to do a significant amount of damage if they are in the right place at the right time because they're able to uh, ignore their suppression and also deliver the damage with their precise one keyword, the aim from offensive push. Unfortunately, this list is short on shared aim tokens. Coordinated fire could be really good here. You'll still issue it off of Palpatine, so you'll still get aggressive tactics. But let's talk now about the objective. Objective tonight is going to be hostage exchange. Yes, that's right. Hostage exchange between these two players. It is two force users, but one of them is Palpatine. And Palpatine can use pulling the strings to do free movement on his hostage. That is going to be substantial in this match. We see Zeus's rebels deployed in a very tight formation. It is war weary, the condition. So all of the courage bubbles on this map are going to be reduced down to range one. 
which significantly affects Emperor Palpatine, who would love to be using his Courage 4 commander status to cause his troops to be brave and bold. But war-weary as they are, they cannot access that Emperor's Courage. So yes, I was going to say this does not affect uh, Zeus as much, simply because he doesn't have as many... Uh, courage points to lose. He also has two commanders, so he's able to make twice as many bubbles with his commanders. So he's going to be fine. I believe in the operative Luke list, we're running almost all Luke, and I think just Assault. And then in the Palpatine list, uh, let me see here. I think in the Palpatine list, it's going to be all Palp plus the neutrals. Ooh, turn one. Zeus Juice coming out with a Serve Your Master well. Oh, nice. Okay, so I know exactly why he's doing this. And thank you for the Hydrate Farce returns. I'll get on that in just a moment after I finish calling this play. So Zeus Juice coming out turn one with Serve Your Master well. Now, why would he play Serve Your Master Well on turn one? Well, you see, you can play Serve Your Master Well on friendly units and make them do a free move similar to how Emperor Palpatine does pulling the strings. So Zeus Juice is trying to make his hostage move three times in much the same way that Emperor Palpatine is trying to make his hostage move three times. Because the hostage can double move, and then Luke will do Serve Your Master well on them as a free action. Palpatine, same thing. The Snows are going to double move, and then Palpatine is going to spend an action to use Pulling the Strings to make his hostages move further. So that's why both of them are playing this way. And Palpatine actually playing Standing Orders T1, not yet bothering with an entire Legion his command card that would issue orders to everybody in range three of him and give them aggressive tactics. We saw as the first activation of the turn, the blue rebel officer has gone. He has granted a dodge token using take cover one to the blue rebel trooper captain there. Or I shouldn't say blue, I should say it is the blue player's rebel trooper captain, but it is a green basis on that captain. And Timbo going immediately with his hostage. Ooh, big shots, though, from the Snows into... Who did they shoot with that steady move? I guess they just shot the... Uh... They just shot the Rebel Troopers, and they actually eliminated one of them right away by shooting off steady. What a way to start the game. And the dodge was able to get rid of one of the hits, but the last remaining hit to claim the life of one of uh, Zeus Juice's rebel troopers. And the action is going to go back now. It went back to Zeus, took a standby with a sniper, just too early to move out aggressively with that sniper, was not able to do anything with it. A second unit of snow troopers now moving for Zeus Juice, or sorry, for Timbo, the Imperial player. It's been a while since I've streamed Empire. Empire not in a great place right now competitively, but I gotta say, of all the Imperial lists that I've ever tried, I have the most fun when I play Emperor Palpatine. Now Zeus Juice pinging his snipers, uh, clearly Timbo asking, where are your snipers? I need to position my, my force so that I don't get destroyed by them. A sniper looking for Timbo once more. Not seeing much of anything. Keep in mind, hostage units are immune to enemy effects on turn one. So these hostages are immune to enemy for the duration of the first turn. But it's interesting. If the hostage manages to escape the grasp of the Emperor, which it may be difficult to do, I could see Palpatine playing like ambush, the guards jumping in, getting in contact with these hostage carriers and killing them off. If the hostages escape, both escape cleanly, Timbo is at a disadvantage because he is the red player. 
the red player loses ties on objective, generally speaking. If, if there are no units destroyed and both objectives are tied, or if the points destroyed is tied, then the tie is automatically broken in favor of blue. And the onus is technically on Timbo to move in the more aggressive fashion here. And his list in general is a lot more short ranged, but Zeus has deployed in a very far away position. He was respecting the heck out of double shots and the Royal Guard uh, that is coming from Timbo. You see his rebel troopers are stationed very far back. Doesn't want to get suppressed early, even with the captains, right? The captain is, is effectively just a single use. Captains are basically, uh, well, they're personnel upgrades. They let you take training on your, on your bog standard rebel troopers, which is a very important upgrade. Uh, considering the symbol, considering that nimble uh, pairs so well with situational awareness, they have exhaust. You can do a recover and use them multiple times. There have been occasions when I have played Rebel Trooper captains that I have wanted to recover. It is uh, rare, however, but sometimes you do have the opportunity to recover, especially if you're only shooting with your uh, DLT. If you only have a, a range 4 pot shot with the DLT, it's a great time to recover your captain because your aim is generally not as effective when you're just firing the range 4 gun. You're actually quite likely to just hit your hit your critical hit, the, the single crit you're looking for. We see a sniper double moving, trying to get into a position where it can more easily influence the battle without being counter hit by one of Timbo's snipers. This sniper in pink here, the pink base, owning the lane right now. now. Oh, this is interesting. Timbo, with the clever positioning here, trying to block all those good moves that the uh, trooper captain might have been able to make. That's why he fanned out his snows there, to block the movement coming back the other direction. Some pro gamer moves from Timbo here. Trying to get, trying to prevent these uh, hostage carriers and Luke Skywalker from hooking up at range one, but I don't think it's going to be possible to prevent this. Because Luke just has to be at range one of any miniature. And I think uh, all you have to really do is put a miniature here where my cursor is, and then you're good to go. Luke can just double move, stay here. Yank them with uh, serve, and then on the next turn, if he's afraid of being exposed, you can play a defensive card like Return of the Jedi or any of the dodge cards. The hostages from the rebels have successfully double moved back toward Luke. You're going to see a lot of just dodging up and getting the vigilance train rolling uh, for the rest of this turn one out of Zeus Juice. It won't be terribly exciting, I'm sorry to say. But I think what is interesting is the way that these Royal Guard are going to get positioned. Timbo spreading them out to make sure their Guardian radius is uh, affecting his, his entire list. That Guardian is going to be super helpful in winning the Sniper War against the Rebellion. And we're about to finish turn one here. Turn one mostly positional. Basically, Timbo getting the engine going on his Vigilance Dodge uh, Situational Awareness Troopers. Luke played Serve Your Master well on turn one. So he's measuring for a double move and serve on these hostages, or on this hostage unit to move them further away from the Emperor. The hostage unit of Timbo did take a shot and actually wounded a what, the green Rebel Troopers. So he's actually lost one, one model already. So we're seeing it here. Luke cannot get into range one without moving into range of that sniper. There's just no way. But Luke could move down here to avoid the sniper entirely, get the range one, 
get the serve move, which I think he's absolutely going to do. He could also serve shoot, but not into the enemy hostage. I don't think there's any good shot that this hostage unit has. They only have range four. The snipers are beyond range four. There's a storm captain at four, nothing good at three. So I definitely think you take the serve move and you don't bother, um, you don't bother shooting at all this turn, especially with world guards of the mix. Just no way. That would definitely be a waste uh, not to move. So there's the ping declaring serve your master well. And it's definitely going to be a move. Now this is interesting. Palpatine getting that pulling the strings rolling at range 2 there. Pulling the hostages in. So it looks like the hostages are going to get away clean here. I don't think either side is actually going to be doing much attacking in this second round here. Blue pings declaring vigilance dodges. Tokens getting cleaned up. We're into round two already. All right, so we see my ally is the force from Op Luke versus given to your anger. And actually, red will win priority. Oh boy. So that's actually pretty huge. Um, with given to your anger, he can prevent this hostage unit from being activated first. And Timbo can actually get two activations potentially before this hostage unit can even move. Timbo is activating first here, pulls a sniper from the bag. Choosing to go with a sniper here to add some suppression to this Courage 1 trooper unit. Maybe force them to use their captain early. I believe this is an open shot also. Because these crates are light cover. And the water tower is light cover. I wonder what he's trying to... If he is saying that he can scope something... If they're flipping the miniatures over, it generally means he thinks he can scope a DLT, maybe. Going with the this sniper here, that is definitely heavy, though, because those models are fully obscured. Okay, sniper's aim shooting. I believe that's the open shot. That should kill a trooper. Yeah, a trooper dies. And it's, more importantly, a suppression goes on to that unit. I think Timbo's going to use the effects of give in to your anger and force a unit to activate at right this second. And I believe he's going to force Luke Skywalker to activate now, which is devastating. Luke would not, will not be able to advance into the, uh, the ball that's coming at him, so he's probably just going to move away. Should definitely be heavy cover, this sniper shot here. Okay, so I just reminded them that Luke had to take suppression from the command card since he didn't uh, he didn't run he didn't attack he just ran away. So the, the effect of given to your anger basically says that if you don't attack you take four suppression. Now that is interesting. This was ruled apparently an open shot. I don't see how, but apparently it was ruled that and. I think more Rebel Troopers died than were necessary. But I guess they decided it was... I guess... Okay, I know how. It opened up because of what unit was pulled. So there must have been three outside and only two in the cover. Because one of these snipers killed off the third unit behind the barrier. And so it was no longer heavy cover. However, despite taking that damage... The hostage did escape, and it's going to escape basically cleanly. A few models got killed, but it's no it's no big deal, even so. 
Okay, so now that the hostages are basically out of danger and no units have been killed, it is now completely on Timbo to go into attack mode here and try to get across the board. He now has to walk into the rebel guns. And how he negotiates that we will see unfold over the next two turns or so. But Zeus's objective now is going to be how can I make this approach for Timbo as prickly as possible? We see Timbo now advancing and being aggressive as he needs to be. Getting to range three off the double move, trying to get to somewhere they can shoot. That hostage unit is still exposed. Although, mm, from here, from here, these crates are blocking it. So I think it's actually fine. Timbo just has to find a way around this middle. And that's going to be tough, especially for Palpatine. Like, it really wouldn't surprise me if Zeus just double moves backwards and stays, like, in the back corner. Like, up here, there's a great defensive spot for him behind this uh, circular processing thingamajig. Because that's what that's called. Trying to position himself to where he can see around these central crates. He can definitely see one of the troopers in the back. I don't think he can see the captain. If he stands here, he can see the captain. Maybe. It's really tough. So here's the thing, too. This captain is, not, is on the ground, but these troopers are on a platform, and they're just high enough that their heads can be seen over top of this crate stack. But like, I don't see why Timbo isn't just like full on rushing into Zeus's arms right here. Like, it hardly matters. Just get Palpatine on target, do the bomb, kill the hostage, maybe even kill Luke. You gotta just run in there now. Like, he's gotta go all the way across this board. It's going to take him at least four to five turns to make it in contact with Zeus. And that's assuming Zeus does not just double move his entire army backwards. We've got blue rebel troopers now counter-striking against the aggressive moves that have to be made. Royal guards are in place. Light cover afforded. Rebel troopers are going to go to work. Let's see what they can get done here. All right, here we go. Full unit of Captain DLT, DLT um, Rebel Trooper is going to shoot at these Captain Storms. Nice clean shot there for three after cover, possibly four. Guardian 2 in effect. Guardian 2, the Royal Guards. Double blank, a guard model falls. There is a medic available to revive him. So the Surge actually missing. And the Storm's double blanking as well. So Timbo rolling 0 for 4 here. Some good luck for Zeus coming into play and losing two Stormtroopers and a Royal Guard mini off one shot from this Rebel Trooper DLT Captain. Not a great start to the Imperial Advance. <coughs> Palpatine... En route, just double move from the Emperor, I'm, I'm almost certain, no need to pull strings in this instance. He could pull the Storms, I don't think he needs to bother. We're going for a shot here with pull the strings from the remaining Stormtroopers onto the Rebel hostage, trying to make them drop it. And they get just two hits, they have an aim token from O-Push available, and the red is blank. So the red comes up, and that dodge is going to prevent any damage from being dealt at all. So a failure from pull the strings, unfortunately. So, some salt there from Timbo saying dice can go F themselves. Where were those, where were those saves on R2, LOL? So 
So Timbo clearly, uh, his morale has taken a hit here. Rolling four blanks on reds. Maybe a little bit tilted. Can hardly blame the guy. Number nine, Rebel Sniper. Pew pew into some storms for nothing. I mean, the snows of the hostage can just go hide. Really what has to happen here for Timbo is that he has to eliminate a unit fully without losing his own unit. But that is, that's going to be a hard sell this turn and possibly next. All uh, Zeus Juice has to do is keep rotating these rebel trooper captains into firing position and dealing wounds where he's able to. It's a really a very easy... A very easy game for him at this juncture, but we see an RT-97 actually finding range on the purple captain over here in heavy cover. And it looks like he might actually take the shot and not try to step forward again. Feel better now. Ooh, a crit getting passed through. These guys don't have a dodge. They'll actually take a wound off that RTC shot. It looks like this naked snow trooper is double moving, getting another shot in on purple now. So two suppression potentially for purple if the snows don't miss, which they can do quite easily. They only have white dice with surge. So they could fully miss here. They're also moving into range of a couple of snipers, actually in the range of three snipers. And this unit is, it is low cost, but Timbo not in a position where he can sacrifice any points if he wants to get ahead. Just to recap for those of you just joining us, it is hostage exchange on a war-weary battlefield, long march the deployment. You've got both hostages escaping from the center Timbo's hostage right here where my cursor is in the middle of the screen, and then you've got the rebel hostage from Zeus Juice, or for Zeus Juice, excuse me. And now the snows are shooting into the rebel troopers for three hits, and these guys actually have a dodge now. They were fed a dodge. Or maybe not? I guess they didn't have a dodge because that was... Three after cover, or three through cover, excuse me, one after cover. Just wondering where this dodge, why this dodge is on them, and they're still rolling for uh, for wounds there. Not entirely clear on that. Now, will Timbo receive a counter-strike from this purple sniper? I can only wonder. Looks like he will. Such a nice position that these snipers have found behind this geothermal building. Trying to find good cohesion there. These snipers using these crates as though they are stair steps because of these silhouettes being taller. They are able to actually make a speed one move up this crate stack and towards the roof. And this sniper does see these captain storms that have moved up. It is heavy cover. Not going to find enough hits to make a wound happen, but another suppression for the number three Captain Storms. Not restoring, not actually restoring a guard with this medic. Choosing to restore instead a Stormtrooper. I think that makes sense because these guard are not going to be shooting or swinging. But the storms have range three of the enemy hostage. Oh, this could be a big attack for for Zeus Juice here with the number six Captain Rebel Troopers. And these guys are getting so much suppression stacked on them, but thankfully the Stormtrooper Captain is going to keep them in line. I tell you, Captain Storms are legit as hell.
but so are Vigilance Captain Rebel Troopers. Alright, positioning his squad. Trying to make sure all the remaining miniatures can see. This is a... a four... a four miniature plus DLT squad. So that'll be six black and a white being shot at these Captain Storms. Nice block there from those stormtroopers holding, well, somewhat steady. A storm will fall. And that will do it for the second turn. Moving on to turn three here. Return of the Jedi coming for Zeus Juice. Going to take advantage of that suppression removal to help out both himself and the captain nearby. But ambush has come for the Imperials. And with this ambush, Zeus Juice's hostage could be taking some more damage. The storm captain moving forward in position to shoot at purple potentially. I don't think it can get range 3 on the hostage. Might go ahead and attack purple as well. They are a bit forward. Operative Luke, no force barrier. Seems like Op Luke with force barrier would be a natural choice in a vigilance list. Since he could clean up that extra hit, or two hits, depending on what comes your way. But again, it's all defense against ranged. Luke is supposed to be your defense against a melee. But this is a range 3 shot from Captain Storms. Here they come. Leveling their guns and getting ready to shoot. I believe they are exhausting their O-push. Yep, exhausting O-push. I'm going to reroll. Two crits to start. Getting two more crits. Very nice for those... Stormies, how many saves? It is two saves for the Rebels. So only one damage getting through. The first bright spot in this Imperial game so far being dampened by a great save from Zeus Juice. And now they're going to use their captain, counter hit the damage storms next to the ones that shot, and move away. Very simple game plan. Two crits. For the Rebels. No Guardian because crits. Uh, looks like that Storm... Oh, did he not... What happened there? This is two crits, it's a DLT, right? I don't think they're counting their dice correctly. I think that was an, that was an error there, but Timbo's still losing a stormtrooper to that attack, so I'm sure Zeus Juice is completely satisfied with that. Yeah, TTS dice are like that. They they do seem to frequently have a high attack canceled by a high defense. But these poor stormtroopers are down to just. One body. It looks like the deal, the RT-97 actually got sniped out. So both players are on the verge of losing an activation, but I gotta say Timbo has safed up his hostage. Or sorry, not Timbo. Zeus Juice has safed up his hostage. And Timbo is on the verge of losing his stormtroopers to sniper fire. These snipers are now approaching on the flank as well. Uh, they cannot see anything. They're going to double move to a better position. Basically, all of Timbo's army is just going to have to fall out and rush the rebel lines here. Headlong into the arms, the waiting arms, or I guess the waiting lightsaber of Luke Skywalker. You know, 
I'm watching this game, another thing that, that's really problematic for the Empire to deal with is that a good chunk of their damage is based on chipping crits through. And both the high saves of clones and the um, situational awareness builds from Rebels are affecting that intensely. Yeah, I'm also in the in the one token per roll camp. I really do think that if you just it's one per opportunity. So if you want to share an aim, do it. If you want to share a surge, do it. If you want to share a dodge, do it. But not like sharing ten aims or whatever, whatever stupid thing that you can do. But as it stands, you know, that's just that's just our competitive reality. But it's kind of cool that like tournaments with uh, with the twists are developing. Uh, Yavin based team league certainly uh, at the forefront of that. Just throwing in a bunch of twists and seeing what happens. This tournament itself uh, is has a, a twist in that uh, every player was encouraged to bring a force user. Right, and like, if you take aim sharing away, clones will just abuse dodge sharing. So the sharing thing has to have a cap, because you want the sharing thing to still happen. It just has to happen in a manner that's reasonable, that doesn't allow you to just out-economy all your opponents. Anyway, this is not a, uh, it's not a clone game, this is an empire game, so we're going to... Refocus on what's happening here. So the pink, the pink squad actually medics back the RT-97C that fell. So they have their heavy weapon restored. They are out of charges, however. So no extra charges for the guards or the emperor. This appears to be a DLT captain aim shooting into heavy cover at these Imperials. Such a good dice pool on this unit. Blam! Three crits off the top. Aiming gets uh, nothing further. And they'll save it enough, I believe, to keep the RT alive. So Palp attempting to move. Thankfully not blocked by his own guards, at least I don't think. Yeah, just let him move there. It's margin of error for sure. Moving, and he's, is he going to pull? Or will he move again? Now keep in mind, the Emperor has to get close enough to make an effective Now You Will Die. And if the Emperor pulls every turn on Long March, I don't think he's going to get there. So he has to... He's, okay, he's putting the range band out there. Obviously, he's cognizant of this fact, so he has to make sure that Palpatine can move twice over the next two turns. So Palp actually pulling the guard here, pushing them forward into the mix. A lot of things are suppressed. Thankfully, the Rebel Officer will be taking care of it with Inspire 1. I should probably just pull that suppression off Luke. Now, is Zeus just even remembering that his officers have Inspire 1? I don't know if he is. Inspire 1, really, really clutch, especially when you take a mob of Courage 1 troopers. Officer just take cover, stand by, and inspires Luke. Just does it in the wrong order, but uh, same, same, I guess. Uh, taking a suppression off Luke, Luke can go down to one suppression and then activate Return of the Jedi and clear up all the rest of the suppression from the army. So Operative Luke just being, being himself, being a complete boss. Okay, big rally roll here for Timbo. Rally is enough to stay 
on the field. Oh, Palpatine moved up anyway, so that's not going to matter. So despite being war-weary, Palpatine is close enough now to protect them from panic. Uh, rallies and then decides to exhaust the captain to get both actions. So they're saying you have to decide to use the captain uh, pre-rally. So you didn't actually need to rally there. Yeah, because you it's when you activate is the timing of the captain. Shooting up at a sniper with an RT, looks like. Puts the range three bullet into the green guys to try to suppress them, but then puts the RT up there. Did he take an aim token? No, he decided to move, which is also smart. Does not want to get this stormtrooper eliminated by any means. So took the pot shot, was not able to remove the sniper mini because he only scored two hits. Going to shift to the left and stay behind this refinery processor to stay out of range, or vision I should say, not range, to stay out of sight from the rebel mass behind this geothermal extraction building and also hiding amongst these cargo pallets. Okay, the Royal Guard now being targeted by these rebel troopers. Oof, another big shot. Another triple crit, and now, uh, wow. That is so much damage. Three crits once again going into the guards, and a better save this time, only a single wound being inflicted. Like, in terms of the overall state of the game, like, Timbo's doing as best as he can, I think. It's really, really tough. Like, from this position, the Rebels have a really easy game, frankly. All the Rebels really have to do is just manage their risk. Meanwhile, the Imperials have to just run full bore into the enemy's guns. So this is a really easy game for Rebels right now. Although the guards are now in shooting range, so it's about to get a little bit harder. Oh, they don't want to cohere for. Oh, no, no, no. You do not want to cohere forward. You do not want to give Luke the extra, the extra distance. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Just shoot. You're actually you're already. Are you in operative Luke's range? Well, I mean, yes, yes and no. Luke could just force push them into the open. Luke has saber throw, so Luke can actually just saber throw this and have Pierce again. So Luke, Luke can engage, but Luke can use saber throw and, and avoid the electro staff completely. This was a. Okay, so they found the second sniper. Oh, but they're noticing there's a standby token from the officer? What? No, it's not in range. It doesn't matter. Okay, so he's just trying to shoot the sniper down. And he gets a crit. He might actually do it. This crit will actually stick. And it saves! Just insult to injury! Zeus's dice continuing to hold solid. In fact, you could actually play Son of Skywalker Saber Throw next turn and wipe out the Royals. Because you because now that they ruled it where you can double throw off Son of Skywalker, if I'm not mistaken.
Luke's just like engaged boomerang mode and he just like the lightsaber bends into a boomerang and he just throws it a bunch of times. That'd be a tough boomerang to catch. It'd probably slice your hand off. Yeah, Luke, uh, Luke moves saber throw. He's moving up onto the top so he avoids the charge. So jumping up to avoid the charge and saber throw down into the open. Gotta be a throw. Light cover. They do have a surge. They're not immune to pierce. Like, you know you're going to get the first because Palpatine's not going to play as one pip and the Imperials have already played Ambush. So you can actually very safely play Sun here and do the Saber Throw swing. Hey, what's up, Dak Burton's viewers? Welcome in. Thanks for raiding with your party of 10. Thanks for coming in. We're uh, watching some Star Wars Legion, and we're I'm casting this game. It is uh, Timbo playing Empire versus Zeus Juice playing the Rebels. You got Luke Skywalker on the battlefield, whipping that saber throw into some Royal Guard and getting one of those minis out of off the board, killing it with a crit and pierce. Oh, interesting. Luke going for the full of surprises. Okay, so is Luke getting ready to go in? Okay, Timbo losing priority, interestingly enough. So Timbo going second here. Luke has a little bit of freedom of movement. And going in with a guard, he knows he has to go now. He has to trade these guard for something good. Even if he kills the hostage, he's not going to be able to trade efficiently. Or even if he kills the hostage carrying unit, I mean. He is not going to be able to trade efficiently. He cannot charge Luke. He's just screwed in a lot of ways right here. Thanks, Director Griffin, for the posture check. My posture has been checked, and it is good. So a move shoot from the guards. I'm going to try to net a sniper mini, but Luke is going to just clean them up very quickly. That all depends, though. The sniper is still on heavy cover. Gets th exactly three. Will it save again? Okay. Phew. It did actually die. So points are now off the table for Zeus Juice. The very first set of points off the table. Timbo now ahead in points. So now the emphasis for Timbo swaps immediately to defense as long as he can keep the points uh, in his favor. That sniper being worth 48 points. But the Royal Guard are worth significantly more than that and they're about to get shot to pieces by the DLT troopers of the Rebels. And uh, let me update the turn counter. This is actually... Turn four. I know there is currently no trash can in play, and those guards are going to lose a... Oh, they're not even going to lose a miniature. They're going to lose one miniature. They have a surge token from the Emperor. So they're going to surge on defense and deflect three out of four. Or not deflect, but um, block three out of four of those hits. And the Emperor is on the move. So I think this was the plan. He needs to, he's going to bait with the Royal Guards, make sure everything's focused on them, and meanwhile the Emperor moves in behind. Oh, 
Oh, you weren't you weren't uh, referring to the trash can, the magic trash can. Oh, he's doing it. Okay, so he has pulled the strings to move those guards out to try to make sure they don't die. Wow. Okay, well Luke's gonna have to go in, and if Luke goes in, then the Emperor is gonna hit him with the with the one pip. Oh man, good good strategy from Zeus Juice here, able to get that sniper mini down. Yeah, so Luke could jump down, force push, and kill them, but then he's really close to the Emperor, so then it would be a roll off, and if Luke loses that roll off, I don't know if he can survive. And even if he does survive, he's going to be crazy immobilized in front of the Imperial guns. Like Luke might be out of... Is Luke out of dodge cards? Oh my gosh. Luke used dodge cards. He's He used... He's used three dodge cards now. Oh, if he has I Am a Jedi, then he's going he's gonna to punish it completely. But I don't know if he has I'm a Jedi or Assault. When he gave me his list, he left one of the three pips blank. So if he does have I'm a Jedi, it's aces in this situation. Because the Emperor is the number one, you know, gets countered by I'm a Jedi very clearly. And that's how it should be. So if you're in Zeus Juice's shoes now, you're thinking, how can I kill a unit without losing any more of my own. Now the shoe's on the other foot. So you've got a fairly exposed set of snows up here that are probably gonna be in Zeus's sights. He's got, let's see, one sniper, two snipers on him. He's got at least one DLT on him. I think Luke with a force push here could be really significant against the Royals. The big problem I have with I Am a Jedi is that it turns off your best like attacker for a turn. Because that's the price you pay for preventing two units from attacking is your own can't attack. So in that sense, it's a balanced card. Snow's actually shooting at snipers and not going to get any headway there, just a suppression. Talking about what level of cover is being granted from here, saying that it's blocked off by the chimney vent. The sniper team actually has range three on the snow, so they can shoot with both their guns. Looks like they're going to do exactly that, and they can totally see. Yeah, you absolutely shoot with all your guns here and then try to eliminate the uh, that unit. Ugh, missing pretty horribly. Uh, gonna move away, not risking losing that unit. Big miss from those snipers, takes an aim, another big whiff. Ugh, Imperial snipers not getting the job done. Speaking of failure, these rebel snipers were not able to get any paint there. Again, <laughs> oh! Man, it has been a series of sniper fails in, this, in the last few minutes. And now look where the uh, hostage has gotten off to for Timbo, it's all the way in the back. Here, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a John Madden real quick. Hang on. Oh, hold on a second. Didn't hide my display cap so you couldn't see it. Ooh, a sniper actually scoring a hit on the rebel hostage carrier. So Timbo finding the hostage carrier of the rebels in the backfield and removing a miniature there. That's a big development. 
That puts this stress, uh, Rebel Hostage, within two wounds of being dropped. But anyway, what I'm hoping to see, I'm going to draw on the board for a second here. So I'm hoping that Op Luke dives this direction and then force pushes this Royal Guard unit. So the leader goes here and then coheres about here with the other guy and then charges in and does a bunch of damage. That's my hope anyway. And then it's going to be a big one pip to see if Luke can get away. But we'll see what happens. Oh, look at this. Timbo, what a man. He's going to go ahead and move into the difficult crater to try to get vision on this two-body RT unit. He's got the RT-97 in vision, just barely, with like two troopers. <laughs> But I think they're actually going to shoot the sniper first and then probably move again and try to get this RT. Nice play by Timbo. He's trying to take control of this lane. So these snipers are being shot, but what has to happen here is if Timbo stays over here, then all of his shots this direction are blocked. But if Timbo is able to shift down this way, he's going to shoot from this good angle here. So all those are going to be in the open there. Here, let me draw better. There. He wants to he wants to take control of this patch of ground right here. Because if he stays here, this is no good. And he cannot and he cannot move out here because he will just get destroyed. So the best thing to do is to shift his entire gun line into this this area here. And then once they're done. Then they hit, then he can retreat this direction and escape. Okay, now this is the Luke play we talked about. He should have range one from here. He needs to range one. No, don't jump over and don't no. No. Timbo might get fed a Luke here. He can push these guards and drag them around the corner. Is he trying to drag the RTs into Luke? Is this the gr is this greed right here? This could just be greed. Do it. He had a safer play with the force push, but he elected not to take it. He's going to go, he's going to go on top of this? It is unavoidable. It is your destiny. That's your destiny to get capped by Palpatine. Will we see Luke fall to the dark side? Okay, he is force pushing. But he's going to end in melee. He had a chance to attack that I think he missed. Yeah, he could definitely have cohered through this gap. Put the second miniature right here if he had range 1. I think he had range 1 from right here. I don't think he needed a second move. Maybe he thought he didn't have it, though. But yeah, this is a melee. So is Luke going to try for the Son of Skywalker in melee and retreat? Because I guess this is fine.
Because look at this. So as long as these guards are engaged with Luke, the pelt bomb doesn't land. Because the pelt bomb, um, it's either ranged or melee. But when it's ranged, it can't shoot into an engagement. So he's actually protected himself from the pelt bomb with this maneuver. So this was actually kind of a nice little piece of play here by, uh, by Zeus Juice, something I certainly didn't see. I thought he was just going to go for the kill, but that would leave him vulnerable to the pelt bomb if he loses the roll off. I don't think Palp has a force push off one move. No, Palp doesn't even have force push. Palp has barrier and anger. Yeah, so it's it's force push against not force push is another another problem here. Okay, so RT7 storms are going into these rebel troopers that decided to try to cut around and go after this captain with two miniatures left. They are now getting punished. Ooh, big shot from the RT-97C. But again, vigilance and cover negating most of it. And just one rebel trooper will fall despite the size of the shot. That's going to be the end of four, and Timbo immediately drops a CC. I think he's going for the bomb. This is going to be a roll-off, I guarantee it. Yup, there it is. Now you will die versus Son of Skywalker. Huge roll-off right here. Flip those coins, gentlemen. And blue loses priority, and the Emperor will move first. Do they just withdraw? What? Okay, I guess they withdraw, forcing Luke to activate, or he gets pelt bombed. I guess, I guess you have to withdraw to get Luke out of melee, but Zeus can just yank them back in. Like, really? Like, all Zeus has to do is just yank them back in, and he's fine. Yeah, you pull them back in, double tap, and then run away. And then Pal Bomb is, is gone. Because I think Luke can go can easily go to a place where Palpatine can't get to him. I think Luke can just go here. And then Zeus is fine. I'm going to be really curious about this in post. Yeah, I think it was way too early for Palps 1. I think you should have played entire Legion. Because he hasn't played entire Legion yet, so. Looks like he is going to force push. What is he going to do with that force push? Oh, I make very few mistakes IRL, John. It's not no mistakes. I make very few mistakes. Yeah, I'm also... I'm mystified. Okay, what? Is Luke going in? Oh, he's diving with Luke. This is an... this is a huge error. Okay, well, if he is able to pull the IRG into him and not kill them, he'll save himself from the nuke. That is true. So this is actually Zeus just being extra greedy.
And Op Luke rolling a pretty garbage roll right there, but still Pierce 2 will help. Yeah, Palp could just walk into melee. And then a huge swing, that's gonna definitely destroy those those uh those stormtroopers off completely. They're they're gone. I can't see them full if they full save, no they don't. So those storms are dead. Luke pulls the IRG back into him. But I'm pretty sure. Palp just double moves unless he positions these IRG to block Palp's melee entrance. Okay, he's positioning the IRG to try to block the melee from Palpatine. Yeah, that was a very risky move. I definitely think the line where he pulls the guard around the corner and fades is the better line. But he did clean up 90-odd points there. Well, not quite 90, excuse me. He cleaned up about 89 there with that Captain Storm. But yeah, if he'd whiffed the second shot, it would have completely backfired. So the question about clamoring during a panic, yes, if you do panic, you have to clamor down if it's possible to do so. Okay, so these snowtroopers decided to activate, they actually panicked. And now these blue rebel troopers are going to move and fire on the RT-97C. And they'll have a heavy shot, not an open one, unfortunately. There is a danger of pulling the strings. There's also a danger of just nuking them from Palp. So it may not be worth the risk to move these Rebel Troopers in, especially now that you're ahead on points, but you never know. Uh, Luke could die. It's possible that Luke dies on six, especially now that he's entangled with the Royal Guard. Of course, if Palp gets close and Luke drops the, the I Am A Jedi on 6, that could be the game right there. I think maybe that... Okay. Okay. I think I just put two and two together. He did this aggressive move because he's trying to land the two-party I Am A Jedi against Palp and the guards. I guarantee that's what he had in mind. That's, that explains all of this. Is that he's trying to, trying to land I Am A Jedi on 6. Looks like sniper on sniper action about to unfold here. Although he's trying to see if he can look at the hostage in the backfield. Don't know if he's got it. Don't think he's going to be able to get it with the, the sniper here. I just don't think he can quite get up the cliff high enough. Yeah, it's not high enough. Yes, definitely. Like, Zeus was not... It was not a walkover for for damn sure. This has actually been a very tight game. Yeah, it's 110% the command cards. Absolutely the command card order. But that is not, that's always a question of experience. Generally, it's not a question of how good you play. Yeah, I don't want to write him off just yet, but things do look pretty dire. Meanwhile, the hostage escaping to hopefully to safety. All right, so what does it say? You cannot remove suppression tokens or be suppressed. I think you don't I think you can still panic. I think it's possible. I don't Hmm. I have to look that up. I think you can still panic, but I mean, your point is well taken. Like, especially with um, uh, Jyn Erso's three pip, I love that card. It's just attached to Jin. <laughs> All 
I love I love Jin to death as a character, as I love her three pip card. Ooh, did he get these snipers at three? Almost. I think he could lean that template in a little bit further, actually. <laughs> he almost has him. Yeah, that should be three right there. Get him, Zeus. Yes. Has the snipers at range three. Gets in there with the template. Coheres the miniatures. Gonna go for the shot. Four black, one white into the enemy sniper strike team up the cliff. Checking on range to the Emperor just in case. Looking for those follow through plays. Gets not enough to eliminate that team, just one after cover. Uh, are the Royals going to Guardian it? The Royal Guards actually choose to Guardian the hit and pay for it with a mini. I don't think that was worth it at all, frankly, but I guess maybe it was because that way this team cannot be sniped off by the enemy snipers. Oh, that might help Palpa get in. Oh, okay, that might get Palpa in the melee. You're absolutely right. Oh, snap. Okay, that could be a problem, folks. All right, he's gonna go the other, the other squad instead. Is he looking for an RT shot on the hostage, maybe? So that could force the drop. Here we go. Is Palp going to get in? Oh, I think he's in. Ooh, this is bad. No, make him measure that. F that. Just go in. Make him measure that. All right, here we go. Palp train. Now you will die. Coming in. I would make him measure that too, but it looks like Palp is going for it. He's banking. I think he's like, let him do this because then he's banking on Luke surviving. Now you will die. And him getting to play I'm a Jedi. Okay, one wound. So far on Luke. Luke is one out of seven. Palpatine making his first attack here. Another attack, stacking those aims up. The dodge was spent, I believe. And choosing... Will he aim this one? I don't think so. Looks like he is going to spend an aim, though. Gets a fourth hit. Luke just goes for it. And... Luke is going to take three. So Luke already on four wounds. More suppressions, more immobilized coming in. Third wound for Palpatine. Another lightning shot. A very bad one. But aims are there to fix it. With two aim tokens, he'll probably get back up to four. Second aim. Gets the four he's looking for. Luke could die. Looks like he will spend his reflexes dodge on this one. Three into Luke. Looking for a big stop here. Does not find it, but the dodge is enough to keep Luke alive. And Palpatine has one more shot in the tank. Does Pal if Palpatine doesn't take this shot, he's going to get hit by I'm a Jedi. Yep, he's going to take the shot. Four wounds. 
Back up to one aim. This is huge. This Luke save could make or break the game. Oh, it's a six! Luke needs a full save. No! Oh, no! Luke Skywalker is no Jedi today. Getting blown the fuck up by Palpatine. All right, so now now he's all in on the Emperor. He has to kill the Emperor on six. Doing some counting now. This is where things get dramatic. This is where Palpatine is going to make a full save. I guarantee, I guarantee it. Pop's going to Guardian, make full save. Yes, we do. We do get to turn five and six around here. Hi, Outrider Dan. Welcome in. Good to see you. Okay, shots into the Emperor. Only one, and the guards will Guardian, I'm sure. And the guard make the stop. No damage on the Emperor. Oh, he took that on Palp? Oh, no, he didn't take it on Palp. Of course, he has to take the suppression for, for Palpatine. That medic is out of charges, for what it's worth. There are no medic charges left. But there are stormtroopers with rifles that can shoot at range 3, and they're going to probably shoot into this rebel captain if they can help it. Uh, or they'll just move away? Backing up, stowing the medic so that the unit can't be eliminated. And he... Ch oh no, he just barely has range 3 because of that forward cohered trooper. Yeah, shoot, move, or move, shoot, or shoot, move, and he misses the shot. So ultimately, a non, a non uh, entity. Sniper has to go after Palp. In my humble opinion, look, going into Palp, looking for the crit here, can totally see Palpatine over the stack. Heavy cover needs a crit. And needs Palpatine to fail that crit. Or to fail the save on that crit. I mean. Got range 3. He's actually going to put both models in there. Because he just needs more dice on target. Oh, is he going for the sniper team? What? No, you... It okay, looks like he's settled on the Emperor. He's gonna shoot with everything, needs a crit. Finds one, this could be it. A one in three to kill the Emperor right here. Timbo. He saves it. Found the crit, Emperor found a save. It was only a one in three after all. Palpatine is hanging by a thread here on a single life. But I mean, if you're Zeus, you kill the Emperor or nothing here. Rebel officer now moving away. Trying to preserve his points. Keep his hostage under wraps so it does not panic off the board. 
Turn five is wrapping up. Luke dying, unfortunately, to the now you will die of Emperor Palpatine after having the melee space opened up by a guardian off a sniper team that successfully killed a royal guard mini and allowed Palp to enter the melee. And Zeus is now going to be forced onto standing orders against entire Legion. And Palp with five suppression could lose an action here. Entire Legion will hit almost everyone. The Emperor has priority. Palp is going to rally and attempt to get his ass into safety. But the Emperor is suppressed! So the Emperor cannot retreat as far as he needs to to stay away from these rebel troopers. There is no way Palpatine can get away. He's too weak. Zeus might pull this game off yet. It is unavoidable. It is your destiny. Hey, welcome in, Krugar. So now the Emperor has to figure out, where can I go that my opponent will now be forced to become the most vulnerable to attack me? Because there's two DLT squads, uh, potentially three actually, that could still shoot on Palp right now. Now, here's the question. Do you move, or do you pull the strings with a sniper? Or do you just take a dodge, which is what Palpatine has done? Palp just dodges. And the core pull comes for Zeus. Getting his blue DLT. With Vigilance Dodge. Shooting at the Emperor, it's heavy cover regardless. Still has the HP on the IRG, still has the dodge token, but the crit machine could turn on. We could see a volley of crits delivered into the Emperor here from this DLT. Will they kill Palpatine? Two crits, it could happen. All Palpatine has to do is miss one. He gets the double! And now the Snows are going to go after the exposed strike team, trying to take the heat off Palp. It is still heavy cover. Just two hits, just suppression. Not being punished there. Strike team immediately moves to shoot on Palpatine. Aim, shoot. Gets one through cover. The Guardian is going to come into effect. No, it's okay. It's not even high velocity, so the dodge will actually go instead of the Guardian. Zeus Juice saw the opportunity for I Am a Jedi on turn 6. He dove Luke in there. And now it is a race to see if Palpatine will fail a single save. The play blowing up in his face as Palpatine was able to engage in melee. Shoot, now you will die, lightning. Remove Luke from the board. And now it's just a down and dirty scrap to see if the Emperor... Can be finished off here. <laughs> Director Griffin coming in with a twenty-five dollars and two cents. Thank you. Uh, I don't think you missed much. Just a move from uh, what appeared to be a sniper, I believe. The Rebel hostages are not completely safe. They have uh, some potential long-range heat coming their way from a sniper and an RT-97. 
Thank you, John, for that donation to the Laptop Fund. You're bringing me one step closer to being able to stream live games of Legion from remote locations. Okay, this is the big DLT shot. Aim, shoot. This is... I think this is the best hope of, of wounding Palpatine right here. Two crits and a hit. Has the aim. He needs more crits. All the crits. Give it everything he got. Not enough. Two crits and a hit. Palpatine is going to roll the two crits right here, I think. The Emperor is falling! The Emperor is down! The DLT sinks the shot. Okay, who's ahead? Let's look at the list really quickly. So let's see what's elim been eliminated here. So you've got one strike team and operative Luke for Zeus Juice being eliminated. And you've got an RT-97 Storm, almost a Royal Guard, and the Emperor for... Timbo, so the rebels are ahead. Huge F for Palpatine, but there's still a chance for the Emperor for the Empire to succeed here. There is still a chance. He could time the snipe on this rebel trooper captain and potentially suppress the rebel officer. The snipers are making their move. They're going for it. Rebels are definitely ahead on points simply because they have not lost any of their core units. Now, that said, these scouts could do major damage at close range to the weakened squads of Zeus Juice, and that's exactly what he's going for. No high velocity here because of the addition of the scout uh, pistols, but it's gonna be an open shot simply because, oh, they're actually gonna debate the cover on this one, ouch. That might not be open, actually. Yeah, that's not gonna be open because of two fully obscured miniatures from the unit leader. But he's going to go with a full boat of dice. Gets four down to two because of the dodge token. He is able to spend the dodge. Pierce one. Going to leave just a unit leader alive. Uh, this one did not already go. Pink was the one that went down here. Yeah, I think exactly Wildstar. You take down as many of the troopers as you can. You try to eliminate this sniper and this rebel trooper squad, and I think that gives you the game. Oh, the officer back here? No, he didn't already go. This officer has a face up, or will have a face up eventually. But if the officer comes up early, there is a chance of a snipe, and there's one of the officer tokens right now. What a game. What a game. Action almost worthy of a final. Officer declines to inspire. He's going for the range two shot. If he can find one on this sniper team. I don't think he can do it unless he gets further out. Okay, he should be able to see here. He is maintaining range 2. Yeah, this game is on a knife edge. 
I'm just going to do some math real quick in the background. So Zeus has destroyed 364 points. And by contrast, the Empire has only destroyed 267. So even if Zeus loses a captain DLT, he is still ahead on points. It's going to require both a captain DLT and one other unit to put the Empire back on top. Wait a minute. No, I miscalculated. Hang, hang on. No, sorry. That, that's incorrect. Let me figure this out. I thought, I thought an Empire Strike Team had been killed when it had not been killed. So I think one DLT would do it. Yeah, so it's 316 versus... Yeah, so 316 for Zeus has scored against... Uh, versus 267. So yeah, one DLT would put the Empire on top. So this blue unit leader is, is key to victory here for Timbo. If he is able to kill this blue unit leader, he wins the game. Timbo does. The shots are coming in now. I don't know if Zeus can finish off another unit in time. That's just going to be fully dodged out by that captain. But yeah, the IRG is is the goal unit here, excuse me, the goal unit for Zeus Juice. He needs to finish off this IRG. It has a surge and it's in light cover. Okay, Hostage is going to take the time now to get safe. Trying to make sure that he's hiding from these two units here. But all that... All that these two units need to do is run around the corner and try to snipe down this captain. In the meantime, everything that's left for Zeus Juice, the sniper, this DLT-20, should invest their time either killing off the Royal Guard leader with two wounds or one of the sniper teams that's fully exposed. Zeus Juice currently in the lead, but it is hanging by a thread. It's about 40 points difference between the two. Yeah, lots of plays still on the field. Captain could also go after the Sniper. You're absolutely right. The Captain could go after the Sniper. Sniper could go after the Sniper. There's a lot of plays. Those Snipers are not in Royal Guard range either. So full move here. Does he go for the Royal Guard to try to sink the sink the game completely, or does he go for the DLT, knowing that there's a risk of losing because he did the math wrong? Uh, Timbo just passed his snow troopers in the back. That's why he's doing two in a row. Timbo just passed. Timbo just passed with the snows because they're safe. Okay, going for the Royals. He's going to try to do this the hard way. A miss. That's not what you want to see. That could be game-breaking for Zeus. Of all the times to miss, they pick the clutch shot. Rebel snipers, zero clutch factor.
He does have a three body DLT. This guard now is going to either move or run away or do something to keep himself alive. Yeah, he's going to run away. Guard flees. Leaving, I think the only option now for Zeus will be to kill the snipers over here. All right, the last big damage on the table for Zeus Juice is activating. He's got range three. He can see both miniatures. He's missing one. Do you aim and go with one less die? I think you might aim and go with one less die. Yep, you aim and miss the dice, you're fine. Okay, they're saying it can see. He gets two crits, that could do it, right there. Wrong save, it's a white dice. He fells the sniper team. What an ending. Okay, now, now it's going to have to be a pick on the officer in the open from the RT. To cancel this, it's got to be the RT-97, and it has to kill the officer, I think, completely. As soon as this officer gets pulled, he's booking, and that's the only token left in the stack. I think this might be checkmate for the Empire. After all of that wrangling, it might just be that that sniper team pushed up too far and could not, could not survive. Yeah, I don't think it's happening. I think you have to go with the RT, and you have to shoot it down in one go, and that's the only way you win. Or, or you kill off this thing. Well, no, let's not forget, he has to kill off the rebel captain, too. So he goes with the captain and tries to kill the captain off. So 267 plus this captain that has to die is going to be 346. But then the Emperor, plus the Strike Team, and the RT-97, I believe was 396? I'm going to do the math again. Excuse me, 364. With that Strike Team down, he has to kill... Oh, is he going for the, he's going for the near strike team with both miniatures exposed. Big shots here. Two crits to equalize. Gets two crits. Timbo, what a game. And precise. He had the O push up. And they almost block it, but they're down. And now the game is going to be predicated on a move shoot from an Imperial Sniper that has to has to kill it's a must kill on this unit leader this sniper cannot whiff this shot it has to get a crit or two hits or no it actually doesn't have to get that it just has to get one hit he needs one hit in the open can he get it He gets it! I think that's game for the Empire. I think they just won it. 
G, capital G. Imps win on points. Timbo confirming it. The Empire wins on points. If that sniper shot had whiffed, it would have been completely the opposite. What an ending. Holy crap. Give it up for these players, man. What a game. What a game. Give it up. What a super hype, hype conclusion to this, this uh, round of eight ladder game. Super hype. A final 100 meter dash on crutches. <laughs> oh my goodness. What an ending. <laughs> Right. We have another <sighs> Imperial March while we do, while we do this interview <laughs> because the Empire actually won a game for once. Mm -hmm. Empire OP, but, yeah, Nerf, Nerf Empire. Empire, man. I don't know what people are saying. Nerf Empire. <laughs> Just get losers who don't play Empire to play Empire, and suddenly I it's mean, good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> We're both were relying heavily on the strategy of just yeah, roll that crits. Yeah, that was pretty much yeah. a just roll crits type of game that we just encountered right there. Yeah. Oh, that was... The, the dice... Not that the dice were super crazy, but like dice determined that game a ton with like various like uh, suppression rolls being failed and like saves off the bat. Like, what, like the dice weren't crazy, it was just like all these actions that, that were like 50-50 whether they could happen or not, the dice were like the gods in this case. Like yeah, Palpatine, sure. if he would have been able to get two actions and just hide, that's game over. Sure, for um, sure. Yeah, it was it was absolutely down to the wire like that for many of the plays. <laughs> um I just gosh. So I, I gotta say I gotta say the the mo the pivotal moment was the guard the royal guard failing the guardian save that was the pivotal moment that opened up the end game for the empire there um i just have to say it because without that guard without that guard dying right palpatine has no entry and palpatine well, well he could still make it he could still make it i was pretty sure i so i still had to double move i yeah, could have still moved, double moved moved. Under Back of Luke. Oh, did you, did um, you have that? Distance? I wanted that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I did. I didn't. I did. I didn't really want to measure it too closely, but I, I wanted that second guard to die anyway, because then, it, like, if Palpatine had to go in the back, then he's in a much worse position to get shot. Like, it's not a bunch of a difference, but it puts me closer to him and easier to see. So that's why I wanted that second guard to die. But I pretty. Sure, I also like if that second guard would have still had a play to get stormtroopers in to hit Luke if Palps couldn't kill Luke. So, uh, but, and if that wouldn't have happened if the guard would have been left alive as well. So, it was, yeah, that was close. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, literally came down to the last shot there because I was doing the points calculations and, like, with yeah. killing this sniper, this juice went ahead and I needed to kill, like, or he was ahead and, like, I, if before this sniper died, I would have won on just killing this lone unit leader, but, but then he killed the sniper, so I had to kill two things. So then I was like, do I shoot uh, this guy with four dice to try and get four hits, or do I shoot two guys, and I decided with five dice, which are going for two crits is more likely. And then I got three, so. <laughs> yeah, it was really yeah. was down to dice at the very end, which just says like how tight this game was all the way through. Like, It was just riding on a knife edge the entire way, but like Luke, I just, man. Zeus, I, ha I have to ask you, did you <laughs> see the pull of the Royal Guard behind the refinery processor? 100%, oh. but that's boring. Oh my that's gosh. boring, okay. yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Why would I do why that? Would I play? Why would I why would make I the that? best play? I should just play the fun play. Because <laughs> if he goes in there, you know, it's great times. It's great times. And also... There is the off chance, I think he would have been pretty safe, but with a Palpatine double move, he might have still gotten a shot on Luke. Would have been way in the open. Um, could have had a bit more cover, so that probably would have been fine. But at least this way, 
if things didn't work out, but somehow Luke survived, that means Palpatine's in base to base with them, and I can I am a Jedi him next turn, um, along with uh, the IRG. So it was fun, but also you know there were some upsides yeah, yeah. to it. And if I wipe this this stormtrooper, I can saber throw, kill the other uh, stormtrooper or, or uh, other stormtroopers, so, but pretty easily. So I thought the um, entire time you were going for the I am a Jedi to nail it on both the Royal Guard and the was, Palpatine. Yeah, he was too far away. Um, like as I looked at that, and he was he could have nailed the ROG, but he wasn't going to get Palpatine. So I was like, well, now he'll die because I needed the one pip regardless. Um, but then the uh, nuke yeah. ended up winning the game for me. Because I'm a Jedi is only range one, so I knew yeah. that turn that you were either going to play at five, I couldn't stop at five, or, or six. Yeah. There, so. I was four. I think I was four. Well. Uh, oh, no, that was five, because I got yeah, five. Yeah, that, oh, that, that was five. five yeah, he that spent was five. the entirety of turn six trying to kill the Emperor, and he finally succeeded, but... There were just too many vulnerabilities in the position since everything was so focused on the Emperor. So, like, ultimately, Palp won the game. Like, just because Palp is doing Palp things. Yeah. Uh, and, like, these snows, too. Like, naked snows killing that one for second oh, model. Yeah. And then I then he exposed him on the other side. That was also, like... And then the turn, and then these guys, when they got first yep. on the guards, they only did one wound with an aimed shot, which meant you had four yeah. dice coming back. Yep. These freaking snipers blanking out. Three yeah, that, dice into no cover that, with Pierce. Kill one model. That was terrible. I'm so sorry that yeah. happened. Well, and I was p not pissed off, but like, because I was shooting these guys sort of that whole last, or like, I think I put three shots to them in total, and like, there was a sniper shot and like a snow shot, and I didn't do any wounds, and because like I was thinking these guys were gonna be my backup. Um, to kill at the end like I did, and I was thinking, well, if I get down to one, then I can, like, Hail Mary it at the end. But then they still had two, so I was like, well, I still gotta Hail Mary it, because it's the yeah, only thing I can really this kill. Strike, this strike team had and to it worked die. Out. There's no question. They had to die. Because if they didn't, yeah. it would have been a rebel point yeah. win. Well, guys, it's been real. Go ahead. Well, I'm like... Sorry, one more point. <laughs> I was just gonna say, and 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 also like, this uh, just moving this rebel officer here was critical because like I was lining up to try and snipe this captain out and then just make you drop your hostage last turn because um, I would have killed the captain here. Oh yeah, exactly. And this, yeah. this guy would have here, and then I would have shot again. So if I could have killed it twice, then I would have won. Well, yeah, and that's why I moved these guys over here to disrupt that yeah. sniper because otherwise I knew Palp could come over here and just start pulling strings. And he yeah. would just pepper down shots over there, so I wanted to cut that. Unfortunately, that was like the biggest rule the the Z6 or the DLPs did in the whole game to kill one sniper. But <laughs> it's very dead. So yeah, I like you love it when they're you love yeah, it when they're very dead. All right, thanks guys for <laughs> yeah. an exciting game. Anyway, um, yeah. the players should really everybody should be really grateful that we have such good players as Legion and can make such exciting endings happen. And uh, we'll see you in, uh, in the next round, Tempo. And Zeus, a really good game. That's some for my for my third game of Empire ever. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, I'll see you guys later. Okay. Cheers. All right, everybody, we're gonna get out of here. Thanks again for everybody that watched today. Thank you, uh, Age Super Day, for the sub, and thank you absolutely to Birdland Fan eighty eight and Director Griffin who both donated to the streaming laptop fund today. Super grateful for that. And we are going to wrap it up there. And we'll see you soon-ish. Uh, Monday is the next Fallen Order stream. Uh, if there are other Legion games to stream, we'll, we'll see if we can catch those. But uh, until next time, my name is Endless. You've been watching Yavin Base. Um, check out our social media. That's all in the About section below the channel window. And we'll see you next time. Peace.